families and thousands of paid for you to come. But I would like to welcome you all to Paradise Valley Holiday Village. We, we hope you have a wonderful stay with us and we're going to start off your week's activities with the period of keeping fit. Mr. Parslow, when you come to the bending down bit, you needn't bother. <laughs> right, here we go. Legs apart. Jump! So we'll try and some keep fit. Jump. Never mind. Jump. But he's got to do his bit. Never mind. Now these exercises slim and they keep the body trim. Though they don't do much for him. Never mind. Right, this time let's have no slackening. I know you've only just arrived at the camp, but I want you to put everything you've got into it, and I mean everybody. Now, bring your left leg in the air, and try to touch it with your right hand. Oh, that's beautiful. Now let's have ten runs on the spot. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this time, I want you to whirl both hands around like a windmill. Here we go. One, two, three, ten, ten. Would the entertainment officer come to the manager's office immediately, please? <laughs> if you could all keep going just for a few minutes on your own. I'll that means no! Bring it! <laughs> what, do you, what do you want, Tuff? I, I mean, Melvin. Stand there. Stand there! And stay there. Woof. <laughs> Bungling meddling, incorrigible idiot. I've done something wrong again, haven't I? <laughs> You've never done anything right! <laughs> what game do you think you're playing? We're not playing any game. We're doing physical training, PT. You astound me, Fogarty. Thank you very much. You do that again! <laughs> I know, I do it every morning, you know. It, it, it like, gets all the campers fit, you know, except them that, like, twist them out. The new guests haven't been here more than 30 seconds and already you've upset them. It usually takes me longer than that, doesn't it, <laughs> no, no, honestly, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but there aren't any new guests, because if the thread being, I'd, I'd have taken them on me, you know, getting to know the camp guided talkers. I always start them off on that. I've already told you the new guests have arrived, and thanks to your PT class, they're in no mood to go traipsing about the camp. Yeah, well, nobody will have to go traipsing in the future. I've got wheels. Where? In your head? <laughs> no, no, honestly, I have a, I've got a vehicle. I, 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 I've, I've built it. I, I've been working on it secretly. Any work you've done must be in secret. Thank you very much. It, it's lovely, though, honestly. You, you, you'll, you'll love it. You, you will. I want, I want you to christen it, you know, with a, with a, with a bottle or something. I'm, I'm going to call it my Sunshine Holiday Express. You haven't been spending money, have you? No, no, not even my own. No, you told me, you know, to use my ingenuity, didn't you, and be ingenious. Well, I've, I've done that, and I've, I've used my intuition as well. What exactly have you done? I've built a camper transporter, you know, for transporting the campers around the camp. I made it out of, like, bits and pieces that the RAF left behind in that old hangar, you know, we renamed the unique one-floor multi-storey car park. Well, I hope your creation will pass its MOT. It won't have to have an MOT, not on the camp, and I don't think it'll get past the gates, Magic. I'll, I'll, I'll go and sort the new campers out, don't bother, they'll sort them out. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll tell them they're inaugurating the maiden voyage of his Sunshine Holiday Express, then I'll take them on a tour to camp on it. Just make sure you keep it on the road. Yeah, well, if it goes out of control, I'll try and get something cheap. <laughs> so it's training is on the go, never mind. The new guests are all in tow, never mind. So it's bought up for his chat, and he's got the whole thing flat. Though his driving's not all that, never mind. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to look to the left, you will see the bingo hall, ballroom and recreation complex. Complex? Where, for goodness sake? That building there. But it's an old army hut. But it's a feature of the camp. It, it saves a lot of walking about. Bingo in one minute, dance in the next, and, and recreation in the next. And, and it's all under one roof. But I don't like bingo and dancing. I do. Oh, I shut up. <laughs> it's, it's not compulsory. <laughs> To the right, ladies and gentlemen, you will see the admin block where me and Tap are together. Right in front, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we have a garage for over 2,000 cars. 
It's like an old hand to me. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, like it was. But, but that's good, that, because we shan't have to build one for when the foreign packing stores start flying in. Matthew. It gets worse. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, on the left you can see what is going to be yet another luxuriously appointed chalet block uh, under the Kemp's reclamation scheme. And over here you can see where draft proofing has already been commenced. Get out of it. It's another all I hear for. Yeah, well it is really, but Taft said we were very lucky to get them. Some of the few might have slept in them. Very few indeed by the looks of them. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep in there. There's barbed wire everywhere. Yeah, well, that's, that's for security. That's to stop people breaking in and using your facilities and amenities. <laughs> this is where all the aquatic sports will be centred, around the swimming pool. <laughs> Just a diving ball. Where's the pool? Well, it, it, it's got to have a bit of work done on it. Ooh! This is incredible. Derelict huts, no facilities, and you. I think it'll be all right when we've settled in. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Excuse me, like speaking while you're all speaking, but is, is this like a complaint? Of course it's a complaint. Yeah, yeah well, you, you wouldn't really know, like, just having arrived, but if, if you've got a complaint, you have to sort of do it officially through a meeting, you know, chaired by the chairman of the official complaints committee. And who's that? Me. <laughs> That does it. I'm not going to speak to underlings any longer. I want to speak to the person in charge. The, 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 well, there's only three above me, and, and Mrs. Price isn't here, and Mr. Price, he's convalescing still, and so you'll, you'll have to see Mr. Price. Just shut up and drive. Right. Hold tight. <laughs> You deal with it. I, I can't. They want to talk to an overling. Look, I am in no mood to chat to petty punters with trivial complaints. I, I don't think you ought to say that. Why not? Because we're outside listening. <laughs> uh, get to the lady a chair. I don't want one. How dare you call my family petty punters? I do apologise, madam, and I assure you, when using the vernacular, it is a term of endearment. Now, um... What can I do to make your stay more enjoyable? Uh, wouldn't it be a good idea if Oh, we... shut up! Just <laughs> refund our money and let's go home! Oh, well, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid that that is not possible. If you would care to examine your agreement with us, I think you will find under clause 211, paragraph 7, section 73, that the only thing we can offer you is an alternative week's holiday with us. I told you there'd be that sort of clause. Shut up! I <laughs> might have known you'd be a charlatan. What do you mean, charlatan? Do you know what charlatan means? It means a rotten, cheating blackguard. <laughs> Shut up! Yeah, so am I. <laughs> no, but you see, Mitch, Mrs. Mitchell... By the way, this is Mrs. Mitchell. Oh, and these, these other people are like... other people, but, but she had a complaint, like, you know, when she was on the Sunshine Holiday Express, and I told her I'd convene a meeting, you know, the Campus Complaints Committee meeting, in the Campus Complaints Committee room, but, but she insisted on seeing you, because, like, I'm only an underling. The Sunshine Holiday Express, as you call it, is your responsibility. What's gone wrong with it? Bolts have come loose. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no, no, but Mrs. Mitchell's not complaining about that anymore. She's complaining about the swimming pool. What swimming pool? That's what she's complaining about. <laughs> you see, in the brochure... Mother's it's... seen to it. Shut up! You can both shut up! <laughs> Where is the swimming pool mentioned in this brochure? Manifesto. Frog it! <laughs> The only reason we came here was because of this so-called Olympic-sized swimming pool. My son happens to be the Runcorn and District Butterfly Champion. Good job we haven't got a pool and they've got the wings wet. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, we haven't got a pool for a very good reason. It had better be a very good reason. Well... Planning permission. Planning permission? No planning permission. Why? It was refused. You know, it's an offence under the Trades Description Act to advertise things you haven't got. 
Yes, but we didn't advertise what we knew we hadn't got because we didn't know we couldn't get what we wanted until it was too late, you see. <laughs> it, um, you begin to sound like me. <laughs> However, plans for the pool are in progress at this moment and it should be completed quite soon. But I thought you said planning permission had been refused. It was refused, but now it's been granted. Pardon? Granted. <laughs> <laughs> My family are leaving this apology for a holiday camp, and I can assure you that as soon as I get home, I'm going to sue you under the Trades Description Act for everything you've got. Do you mean everything he hasn't got? <laughs> shut up! Yes, shut up! Uh, hey, you want to watch it? You've started agreeing. <laughs> you will be hearing from my solicitor. Come, Reggie, children. I didn't know we'd got a solicitor. Oh, shut up! <laughs> What are you going to do, Taff? Because if the trade description man comes round, you know, and investigates, he'll, he'll make us shut up. I wish you would. Look, Froggy, there's only one thing for it. We've got to have a swimming pool. You'd better get digging. Digging? I can't dig an Olympic-sized swimming pool on my own. Well, get the campus to help. They're always moaning about the lack of activities. They'll enjoy it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's great. That, that's magic. That's fantastic. We'll have a competition, see who can get most earth out. I'll, I'll get everybody, like, you know, to muck in to, to get, like... The muck out. <laughs> it was good, that one, did that? I'll, I'll go and get a meeting organised. Froggett, don't mention anything about a pool. No, no, I won't. I'll tell them, like, they're, they're like digging for treasure. Hey, that'll be good. I'll call it the muck out treasure hunt. Do, do, do you think we could have a prize? Hey, Taff, that'd be good. That, that, would, that could be, like, the treasure they're digging for. I, I tell you what, you, you bury some treasure and I'll, I'll go and get them organised. What, 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 what would you like to bury? Don't tempt me. <laughs> I'd be your proper little treasure then, wouldn't I? <laughs> now the treasure's buried where? Well, never mind. So if Froggy doesn't care, never mind. For the swimming pool's begun and the campers will have fun. Digging treasure by the sun. Oh, sorry. I bet that's the first time you haven't called a spade a spade. <laughs> never Everybody, if, if, you, if you like to take your pick of, of shovels and forks, because we've only got one pick. <laughs> just, anyway, just get an implement and follow the treasure trail clues, all right? I'll, I'll start you all off. If your spade you want to use, never mind. You just follow Selwyn's clues, never mind. Selwyn leads them here and there, but it really isn't fair. Cause they'll end up, you know where. Never mind. Right, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Now, the treasure's buried somewhere in this area. I, I, I don't know what it is or exactly where it is, but the first person that finds it, is, he'll know what it is, because that's his prize. All right, I'll give you your start with ten. On your march! <laughs> now they dig for all their worth, never mind. While our cell we shift the earth, never mind. Christ, I'll call our lad a fool. All these holes will make a pool. So the campus can get cool. Hey, I found it. I found the treasure. Right, hold it, everybody. Right, let's have a look. Because even I don't know what it is. Hey, that's great. That's fantastic. What is it? Hey, it's, it's got some writing on it. It says, uh, Ank Dung. <laughs> Nine, four, three, 1943. Hey, I know what this is. <laughs> about your bad back, didn't you? So, thank you very much, just the same. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come here. I should have gone to Majorca. <laughs> no, don't worry, you, you won't come to any harm. And if you'd have gone to Majorca, I mean, you might, you might not have found one, but I bet it would have cost you one. What are you on about? Bob. <laughs> hey, 
Have you heard that one? Cost a bomber. <laughs> Should have gone to Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> Typical of this cat. Come here for holiday and you look like being blown into the middle of next week. <laughs> Dan, you're all right. I mean, it's, it's not our fault, is it? I mean, blame the Luftwaffe. I hope somebody's doing something. We can't sit about here forever. You're, you're all right, honestly. I've, I've got everything under control. Because I, I, was, I was in the army at Catrick near Scotch Corner. <laughs> not only that, but I, I saw this film about bombs. It was fantastic. That Glynis Johns was in it. Can't, can't remember what it was called. I think I saw that. Was it the Damp Busters? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Look, are we going to sit around here all day having a film quiz? There's a bomb out there. We're in danger. You no, know, you're all right, because I'm experienced. I've, I've been to see this film. Honestly, it was fantastic. That Trevor Howard was in it as well. What was it called? Half a minute. I think I've got it. Reach for the sky. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't think it was that either. Uh, don't start that again. What steps are you taking to protect us, Froggy? Well, I've already started, haven't I, with, with the sandbags full of muck. And not only that, I've got some sticky paper. I'm going to stick it all over the windows, you know. They did it in this film. It's to, like, stop the glass from flying if the bomb goes off. It's not going to go off, is it? <laughs> no, you're all right, Mr Parcel. It won't go off till it starts ticking. They, they have to start ticking, you see. It happened right in this film. It didn't go off till it started ticking. It was a fantastic... I wish I could think of the name of it, but I remember the story because they got this great big crane, you know, to, to pull the bomb out, and that's that, actually that's what I'm going to do. It, it were a great film. It, I tell you what happened. This bomb, you see, it dropped at the bottom of Glynis Johns's garden, but but she wasn't there, you see, because she she were playing she were playing like a Red Cross nurse, you know, in the Red Cross, and she was looking after all, all these injured war heroes played by Trevor Allen. And uh, then she saw the bomb, like when she got home, so she rang up on the phone to her boyfriend, played by James Mason. And he, he happened to be like a, a bomb disposal officer, so he got in touch with his adjutant, played by Stuart Granger, and actually he was secretly in love with Glynis Johns. He was honest, but, but you see, Trevor Howard didn't know about that, so he was like friendly. Anyway, he took him along, and they, and they took this big crane to Glynis Johns' garden, and, and they pulled this bomb out with it, and they just got it in their arms like that, and it went up, and like, they were blown up. <laughs> but it, it had a bit of an happy ending eventually because you see Glynis Jones she was secretly in love with this petty officer played by John Mills <laughs> so I mean she made the right decision didn't she I mean he's got a nice one <laughs> what's all that got to do with our bomb well nothing except I remember this great big crane you know they pulled it out with and you know so this is the first time I've had a chance to put my knowledge into practice. Actually, I'd better go because I want to make some drawings, you know, of the, like pulling out equipment. W would anybody like to come and watch? We're not moving from these sandbags. Right, you, you stop here, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go and draw some plans. Hey, I tell you what, while I've gone, if, if you like, why don't you have a bit of a sing-song if you're frightened, keep your spirits up. Because they did that in this film. They did a lot of singing and they, and they drank a lot of tea. We ain't got no tea. Well, I'll, I'll go and make you some. I think I'd sooner be blown up. <laughs> right, show me along. So this is where you are. What the devil's going on? Where is everybody? There's not a soul to be seen on the camp. Have they all gone underground? Nearer the truth than you think. <laughs> no, one of the campers dug something up on the treasure hunt. That's impossible. I didn't bury anything. You, you said you would have. Yes, well, I'm going to give a prize later on when the pool is done. How far have you got? We stopped when we got to the bomb. <laughs> Look, Froggy, this swimming pool is urgent. We can't afford to waste time playing about with <coughs> football. H4239, 80 kilo German unexploded. Unexploded? Up to now. <laughs> well, I, I, don't just sit there. Go on, call the police and tell them to get rid of it. That's no good. Why not? Well, if, if you find a bomb, it has to be handled by the army. I'll go and call them. You can't call the army. Why not? You can never get the police to do it. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd consider doing everybody a favour by going and wrapping yourself round it, would you? <laughs> boom, boom. That's it. <laughs> hey, it'll be great, though, won't it? All, all the publicity, you know, about having a bomb. You know, for the camp, it'll be, it'll be all in the newspapers. It'll be great. Oh, no, it won't. I don't want my name banded about by the press. It's better to have your name banded than your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Project. This is no time for jokes. We'll be ruined. No one will come here if they hear about bombs going off all over the camp. Well, if you, if you don't want any publicity, there's, there's no need to let anybody know at all. Because, I mean, I, I, can, I, I know all about bombs because I was in the army at Catrick near Scotch Corner. 
And, I've, and apart from that, like, you know, I've, I've seen this film. So, so I tell you what, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing that now, I'm, I'm going to deal with it myself. Where are you going? Into the old air shelter. I didn't know there was one. I'll, I'll tell all the campers. No, I don't want that mob down there. I tell them there's no room. Look, I don't want any publicity about this bomb, so keep it as quiet as you can. It'll be a bit difficult if it goes up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> or a bomb disposal plan, never mind. Selwyn Frog is his command, never mind. From a film he's learnt this game, how a ticking bomb to tame. He just can't recall its name. Never mind. Hello, Selwyn. Got the tea on? No, oh, come inside and shut the door in that order. What's up? Nothing, it's already come down. <laughs> What are you on about? Hey, we've got an emergency on. And, I, and I've been chosen to deal with it, you know, because I was in the army at Catrick near Scotch Corner. Because, <laughs> you know, like, I've, I've, I've seen this film. What are you on about? Only an H42398 kilo German unexploded bomb that's been found on the camp. Ta da! Come on, yeah, yeah, you're all right. You're all right. I've, I've, I've done a course on it. I, I know all about it. Yes, but does it know all about you? <laughs> you can't do it. You're right. We'll have to ring the police. No, you, you can't ring the police. You have, you have to ring the army. We'll ring them. You can't ring the army. You have to get the police to do it. <laughs> but you, in any case, you know, Tuffy, Tuff's put a, a, a cross in the appropriate space. You know what? We don't want any publicity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't you get it? You know, like on the pools. <laughs> hey, in any case, we're, we're not going to call anybody because I know, I know all about it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to do it myself. You can help if you like. I'm not going near it. You're all right, you'll be with me. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, it, it's quite safe because it's not ticking. You see, it's all right until it starts ticking and this one's not ticking. It's like that in this film. What I'm going to do, you see, I'm going to pull it out with, with this crane. You know what I'm going to build? Look, great, isn't it? What are you building, the fourth bridge? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a bomb puller outer. <laughs> you're, you're all right if, you, if you're an expert. You, you know, you'll be all right with me because all you've got to do, you see, is you've got to get your pulleys and your weight differentials in the right order. Come on, let's go and get cracking with it. Come on. Hey, by the way, you don't know the title of a film, do you? With James Mason, Stuart Granger and a bomb. Yeah? From here to eternity. That's not it either. I'll probably stop trying to remember it, you know, then it'll like come to me with a bang. <laughs> come on, because I want to film it. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> Are you sure you're doing the right thing? You're all right, unless it's got your name on it. <laughs> hey, your name's not that tongue, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it somewhere safe. Well, watch where you put it. Yeah, you're all right. Are you coming with me? No, I've got a better idea. What's that? I'll wait here till you get back. into my shelter, babbling that you've moved the bomb. You haven't touched it, have you? Yeah, but not much with my hands. <laughs> you used to, to deal with it, so, so I am doing it. Like, like in this film, I saw. Oh, shut up about the film. They phoned the police. There'll be an army disposal unit here in five minutes. Where is it? There's what? The bomb, you cretin, the bomb! <laughs> hey, hey, Tuff, Tuff, hey, uh, ring them up. Tell them not to bother. <laughs> Tell them an expert's dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mervyn Price is on the brink, 
Selwyn's landed in the drink. Will he catch him, do you think? Never!